Title appears, hashtag GACon, IDGA GA SIG Awards 2023. A white woman with mint green hair and winged eyeliner sits in a room with Pokemon plushies and horror movie merch. Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Accessibility Conference Awards 2023. Before we get started, I want to let you know that we have captions available in multiple languages as well as ASL, BSL, and audio descriptive streams. Please check out the information below to choose the one that's right for you. She smiles. Hello, I am Tara Velker, and I am the co-director of the Game Accessibility Conference and these awards along with my dear friend Ian Hamilton. We are so excited that we've been able to do these awards for a second year. If you're anything like me after this year, I definitely had a little bit of burnout. The industry has been a little bit of a rough place, so I needed a pick-me-up. And these awards and all of the titles who were nominated and all of the winners definitely, definitely gave me such joy in my heart. And of course, one of the other things that gave me joy in my heart was the infectious laughter of our host today. So returning for another amazing edition of the Game Accessibility Conference Awards is your host and all around awesome guy, Steve Saylor. Over to you, Steve. A white man wears a dark suit jacket. Thanks, Tara. Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, and it is an honor to be asked back to host the GA Conf Awards for 2023. Technically, I'm, this is for 2020. I don't know. I always get years mixed up. <laughs> for our blind viewers, I'm sitting in my office with a bunch of gaming and nerd items on the shelves behind me. I'm a white male with blonde hair and black frame glasses. I'm wearing a blue suit jacket with a black turtleneck underneath. Now, normally in a lot of award shows, the host usually does an opening monologue with a bunch of jokes about the industry that they are talking about in the show. But I'm not going to do that because 2023 has been an undeniably tough year for the industry in general. But even against that backdrop, accessibility has still been a shining light with huge strides and industry firsts made in all kinds of areas. I mean, yeah, 2023 was the best and worst year for gaming. And to those of you watching who helped make some of our favorite games ever and also helped make them accessible and who also have been affected by decisions beyond your control, even including in just the first few weeks of 2024. He points. We stand with you. I stand with you. You are massively talented at what you do. We want you to make more art because that's what gaming is. It's art. And by you making them also accessible means that more players can access that art and appreciate what you are telling the audience and in through your art. We want to play your games, especially those who help push for more accessibility and inclusivity. We need more people like you. We appreciate you. We love you. And I want to see you next year winning an award for an accessibility or accessibility in 2025. Steve gives a slight smile. Honestly, there's no really great segue into this next segment. So pretend it was a good one and tell my self-confidence in the comments that it was the best segue you've ever heard. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have 19 categories for you today, some returning and some new. They've been nominated and voted on by a combination of an expert panel of judges and nearly 2,000 public votes from the community. They cover a wide range of areas in recognition of how diverse the contributions to the field are. If you want to know more about the nominees and why they made it to the finals, head to the awards section on GACONF.com. That's G-A-C-O-N-F.com. Each of the finalists has a link out to info about their work, and you'll find information about how the awards work too. All right, let's go on. Steve cocks his head and Look, waggles his finger. Blooper of the year. Oh, I want the show. Let's go. Well, not, that's not blooper. What? Hmm. Out with the show, all right? <laughs> Edit this out. On with the show. <laughs> Against a dark background, hazy gold spots shimmer. Text appears, AAA excellence. In his office, Steve. We're kicking today off with two broad categories. The first is AAA excellence. 
These big successes hold a unique power in their ability to influence others, not just opening up the audiences of their own game, but showing developers and players alike what is possible, setting examples and expectations. Last year's worthy winner of this category was God of War Ragnarok. So it makes me very happy to be able to welcome accessibility superhero, and she is a superhero, Mila Pavlin of Monolith to present this category. In her previous role as Sony Santa Monica, she was instrumental in Ragnarok's accessibility. Over to you, Mila. Mila has short pink hair. Thanks, Steve. So the AAA category is for big games made with big teams and big budgets. And although that opens doors, it's not easy. I can tell you that from experience, that there are a lot of pressures that are very specific to AAA games. So it's amazing to see so many games this year knocking it out of the park for accessibility. And although we sadly can't feature all of them today, I can give you three finalists. So the finalists for this year's award are Mortal Kombat 1, Forza Motorsports, Diablo 4. She leans forward. And the winner of the 2023 GA Conf Award for AAA Excellence goes to Forza Motorsports. Forza is the first AAA racer to be fully accessible to blind players, and it does amazingly well in other areas. Its motor accessibility really pushed the envelope when it comes to this genre, and it comes with a level of polish that can only be seen when you start accessibility early in development. So congratulations to the Forza team, to their consultants, and a wholehearted thank you to all that you do for the industry. Back to you, Steve. She points sharply. An amazing, great effort to the Forza team and made possible by years of dialogue and collaboration with the community. You really love to see it. Huge congrats to everyone involved. And hey, another big, huge win. You got a game award and you got a GA Conf award. So... That's success in my book. <laughs> Over the shimmering motes of gold light, text appears, Indie Excellence. Steve raises his eyebrows. Our next award celebrates the other side of Spectrum, Indie Development. Indies are consistent superstars of accessibility, making the most of the creative freedom and agility that being an Indie allows in order to deliver truly innovative experiences for as many of their players as possible. And you can't have been involved in Indie social media discourse over the past year without coming across another crab's treasure and its philosophy of making accessibility fun by adding a gun. I did not realize that actually rhymed. <laughs> and yes, give Krill a gun. If you have not seen this, oh, just go check it out. It is honestly the coolest accessibility feature I have seen in any game ever. And I just love the name, give Krill a gun. I'm not, you know what? I'm not a fan of guns in general, but that's a pretty dang good accessibility option right there. So make sure to check it out. So to introduce this award, I'd like to welcome the studio head and art director of Agro Crab, Nick Kamen. Nick holds a bag of white cheddar Cheetos. Thanks, Steve, and thanks for having me. Tackling accessibility as an indie can be daunting, and don't I know it. With tighter budgets and smaller teams, it's easy to leave accessibility features on the cutting room floor which makes it all the more impressive when indies do go the extra mile. Indies are the risk takers and trailblazers of the industry and have the power to not just support accessibility, but to innovate on it. All of this year's finalists are great examples of that in practice. And they are Stories of Blossom, Stray Gods, and Moving Out Too. And the winner is... He pulls the Cheeto from the bag and examines it. Stories of Blossom. He eats it. So huge congrats to Soft Leaf Studio, who did an incredible job with that game. It's an outstanding example across all areas of accessibility that developers at all levels can learn from. Point and click adventures are usually highly visual mouse controlled games, but Stories of Blossom is also fully blind accessible and controllable using two buttons, alongside all kinds of other goodies from great recap and hint systems to super configurable subtitles. And I did some research, they're a two person team. So if you're a small studio thinking that accessibility is out of reach, look no further than Stories of Blossom. It's a wonderful example of what early consideration and community collaboration can achieve. 
Nick, choose the Cheeto. Honestly, this game impressed so many of us when it launched, though of course it didn't come as a surprise due to how openly and transparently they approached development. Huge congrats to the team and to anyone watching. If you haven't checked out Stories of Blossom out yet, you totally should. One of the best games of last year. <laughs> White text appears, best deaf and hard of hearing accessibility. Our next block of awards is narrower focus, recognizing excellence for specific audiences, starting with deaf and hard of hearing. Designing for hearing loss is a great example of accessibility benefiting everyone. When subtitles are on by default, usage data from Ubisoft and Square Enix has shown they've been used by 97% of players. So it's vitally important for us to get it right. And to present an award to recognize developers who have been getting it right, who better than Chris Robinson, otherwise known as Deaf Gamers TV. A black man with long hair signs. Hello. Thank you, Steve, and so good to see you all. He grins. Last year, we discussed captioning a lot, right? But this year, it's all about the visuals. So what does that mean? Understanding sound through visuals. It's really important to give deaf and hard of hearing gamers a chance to enjoy the games that always rely on sound, right? These three finalists help make that happen. The three finalists are... Chris Fingerspells with a slight smirk. Melatonin. He continues, A straw hat pirate flag hangs beside shelves full of video game cases behind him. Dead by Daylight. And the last one... Hi-Fi Rush. He rubs his chin. Mm. And the 2023 award for best deaf and hard of hearing accessibility goes to Hi-Fi Rush. Yay. Congratulations. Wow. This team included so many different ways to understand sounds with visuals that will help deaf and hard of hearing players finally enjoy a music game. How? Well, one thing is they show the beat pulsing on the screen and in the environment. In this game, your RoboCat friend is acting kind of like a metronome. This metronome goes back and forth to help with the rhythm timing. It's really cool and you can configure the display. You also have Lots of options, including a rhythm assist on the bottom of the screen, so it helps to know when a beat is coming. Wow, awesome job to see that kind of effort to make accessibility. Chris shrugs. Maybe now, music can be enjoyed in a game for the deaf community, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, back to you, Steve. Chris points dramatically to one side. Huge congrats to the team at Tango Gameworks on a job well done. I love Hi-Fi Rush. It's an amazing game. I've been talking about it as far as deaf and hard of hearing accessibility. It's a great game. You should all check it out. One of the best games of last year and deservedly an accessibility award winner for sure. Over the shimmering motes of gold light, text appears. Best physical and mobility accessibility. Steve Saylor. Physical and mobility accessibility is another area which has seen great strides in the past year, and celebrating that progress is what this category is all about. To present the winner, we have the one and only, and I don't know if she's gonna be dressed like a potato in this one, ask her chat, She'll, they'll know, <laughs> Colo Jones. Colo wears a black shirt. Thanks, Steve, and thanks for having me. As someone who plays games with my feet, I know all too well about the kind of assumptions that games can make about our bodies and how sometimes they just don't match up to our realities. She works her jaw. But it doesn't have to be that way. All three of these finalists are great examples of how to get across the emotional experience you want without locking some of your players out through unnecessarily high motor demands. And they are. Stories of Blossom. Forza Motorsport. 
and Street Fighter VI. She smiles, her copper curls gleam in the light. And the winner of Best Physical and Mobility Accessibility is... Street Fighter VI. The fighting genre is one that's known for how physically demanding it is, but Capcom really took this challenge to heart with their modern control scheme, which drastically reduces the number and complexity of the inputs required. But they didn't just want to find a way to bring more people in, they wanted the modern controls to be an absolute equal to the classic controls, even at competitive level. Congratulations to the team. Colo grins widely. This was a lovely example of what happens when you have a principle like that as one of your core pillars from the start of development and also coming hot on the heels of Hi-Fi Rush. This is the second Japanese winner of the show. The last time we had a Japanese game on the winner's list was Animal Crossing back in 2020. We've never had two before. So congrats on that too. Steve yes. flashes a thumbs up. Accessibility is global, baby! Yeah! <laughs> he raises his fists victoriously. White text appears. Best blind and low vision accessibility. This topic is one that's obviously super important to me personally. I said this last year that there had been a real explosion of understanding and implementation recently for blind players, but boy oh boy was I not prepared for what was coming this past year. This host for this category was actually chosen by the community over at audiogames.net, so it gives me great pleasure to welcome their choice, the awesome Liam Irvin, a white man with short hair. Hi, thanks for the intro, Steve. And thanks to all of you at audiogames.net for your support and wanting me to be here today. As Steve said, it has been an incredible year for blind and low vision accessibility. Another huge leap forward. Only this time last year, the idea that we'd have three finalists that are all mainstream sighted games accessible to blind gamers through gameplay audio cues interface accessibility and audio description for gameplay events would have just felt like science fiction, but the fiction is reality. And that's where we are now. We still have a long way to go, but games like these three are helping to forge a path that more and more will follow taking those principles from the audio game sector and putting them firmly into the mainstream. And without further delay, the three are mortal Kombat one, Forza Motorsport, and Stories of Blossom. And the winner of the Best Blind and Low Vision Accessibility is Forza Motorsport. Liam raises his eyebrows. This is the first time that a AAA racing game has been made blind accessible, and a technical simulation racer no less. It has sonification of all the visual information you need to drive, and that means driving with full control as a sighted person would without automation, although optional assists are there if you do want them. They also have one of the best menu narration systems in the business, audio descriptions for cutscenes and racing conditions, and low vision specific considerations too, like HUD and menu size and contrast. The passion and effort that went into this is clear. Huge congratulations to all involved. In his office, Steve. This was honestly an incredibly tight result. The closest of all of this year's categories with stunning work from all of the finalists. I know this has been a real labor of love for the Forza team, so it's a beautiful thing to see it out there in the world. Congratulations again to the Forza team, to Brandon Cole, to Professor Brian Smith, and to everyone else who helped on the journey to make this a reality. That's number two for Forza, let's go! <laughs> Over the shimmering motes of gold light, text appears, best cognitive accessibility. Our next category is for best cognitive accessibility. And to present this, we have the wonderful Poppy Field. Poppy has a bookshelf and candles in the background. Hi, and thanks, Steve. This is a broad category for neurodiversity, cognitive and learning disabilities, covering everything from simulation sickness, executive dysfunction, reading ability and sensory overload, which are all things games can and do throw up significant barriers for. Trust me. Solving those barriers has a really big overlap with good design for all players. 
and our finalists this year are really great examples of that. Those finalists are Assassin's Creed Nexus VR, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Dead Space, Poppy Grins, and the winner for 2023 is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Jedi Survivor has a wealth of considerations, like conversation history, highly configurable game speeds, sim sickness toggles, auto-target switching and locking, auto-quick-time events, navigational assistance, and of course, the incremental hint system. It is a fantastic example of how to reduce cognitive barriers in a complex game, and how that really just often means making a better experience for all players. Congratulations to the team on a job very well done. You smashed it. Steve Saylor. I've loved seeing the journey the team has been on to with the progress between Fallen Order and Survivor. Congratulations, team. Can't wait to see where the journey takes you next. And I'm not saying that just because they gave me a Cal Kestis lightsaber either, because they're, they're just great people, okay? Uh, but also, thanks for the lightsaber. <laughs> Steve clutches the lightsaber, pressing it to his cheek. White text appears, best mental health accessibility This is a new addition for 2023. It's an area that has seen very rapid growth in the past year. So we'd like to take the opportunity to recognize that, to celebrate that progress and the people driving it. And who else better to present this inaugural award than Dr. Rachel Cowart of Take This. She wears a pink blazer. Hi, thanks Steve. For a long time, we've known that games can have a profound impact on our physical, social, and psychological well-being. One such impact that is of particular interest to me is how design choices can impact a player's mental health, particularly mental health challenges like phobias or post-traumatic stress disorder. It's been wonderful to see the industry recognizing the impact that these design choices can have more and more each year, and developers taking concrete steps to improve accessibility for people whose experiences and well-being can be impacted by these design decisions. I'm very excited today to be presenting the very first award for mental health accessibility. We have three wonderful finalists for you today, and they are Dead Space, Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores, and Assassin's Creed Nexus VR. And the winner of the GA Conference Award for Mental Health Accessibility goes to... Dead Space. She smiles. Dead Space has an innovative system of not only giving advance warning of disturbing scenes, but letting players blur them out too, with a full list available on the game's website. They're carefully crafted to avoid the most traumatic content while maintaining the game's sense of dread, helplessness, and isolation. It is still very much a horror game. To achieve that balance is no small feat, so huge congratulations to their team on their well-deserved win. And not only was this an achievement in itself, it was achieved in the context of a remake too. Well played, Motive, even though you scared me half to death. <laughs> It's still a good game. Anyway, that brings our first set of awards to a close. We're going to take a quick break now for a few minutes. So see you in five. Box art appears. On December 10th, 1993, id Software released a game that changed the world forever. Doom. After 30 years, this classic has been modified in many different ways, from custom fan-made levels to full tonal conversion mods, Doom has come a long way. Now, experience Doom from a whole new perspective. Toby Doom. Toby Doom adds accessibility features to the classic FPS game, allowing those with visual impairments to navigate and traverse Doom levels with ease. Such features include audible pickups with narrated feedback, health bonus, health bonus, targeting and hit marker system, impact detection, drop off detection, compass system, north, north, east, east, stat system, bullets, low, health, Narrated main menu and options. Main menu. New game. Options. Load game. Save game. Players too can choose whether they want to play the classic Doom 1 and Doom 2 levels, 
or specially built blind player friendly levels that come with the mod. For more information and updates, be sure to follow Toby Doom on ZDoom.org. Rip and tear until it is done. Wordvoyance is the first Scrabble app that can be played by blind and sighted players at the same time. Experience the joy of building crosswords and outsmarting the other player in this classic board game for all ages. There are no ads in Wordvoyance whatsoever, making it great for schools and young families. Even better, the game is free. You can challenge the computer or any one opponent at a time without spending a dime. Anyone who's played Scrabble or Words with friends will already know how to play, dragging tiles onto the board to make words and score points. However, you can turn on a screen reader at any time and it will just work like magic. T, tile 6, 7, work, A, center. There is even a special mode for braille displays that lets you read the entire board all at once. A Focus 40 braille display. You can find Wordvoyance right now on the App Store and Google Play. Just search Wordvoyance, Word, V-O-Y-A-N-C-E. Or try it on your computer at themisgames.com. That's T-H-E-M-I-S games.com. Colorful interfaces are displayed on tables. Text Brenda Bailey, Minister of Jobs and Innovation. Today, the 10,000th device was built, and this is all done in an open source model. A whole bunch of wins about this event. Chad Lehman. Today, Neil Squire's Makers Making Change programs with Full Circle and EA Development Studio. We're building adaptive joysticks for people with disabilities. Participants solder circuits. Joey Lobet. Today's event was important to me because we were able to sit down together in real time and build some accessibility devices for those who normally wouldn't be able to play games. And being able to see them do just that after a few minutes of putting something together was just really satisfying. Our kids face a lot of barriers to assistive technology. Typically, access to assistive tech is a big one. So organizations like this are really great at being able to kind of meet those needs individually. This is Makers Making Change, and it's about giving people who are experiencing disabilities opportunity to participate fully in the gaming universe. The work Makers Making Change is doing to be able to lower that cost and lower that barrier to entry is really incredible to see. The camaraderie and the sense of connection and the self-esteem and the sense of adventure that you can experience as a gamer shouldn't be shut down for anybody. People should support Makers Making Change because these kinds of endeavors can get quite expensive. And so having a community be able to back these endeavors makes all the difference. Super proud to be here. Really, really proud of Neil Squire. Really proud of EA and all the volunteers who got involved. Text celebrating 10,000 assistive technologies built by Makers Making Change volunteers. A multicolored cogwheel spins. Logos for Neil Squire and Makers Making Change. PlayStation logo. Text with funding from Canada. Access controller. Celebrating launch day. Steve Spawn. I'm excited to be able to venture into these PlayStation exclusive worlds that my friends have been telling me about for years. Beyond excited to share the access controller with some friends of mine who I really think are going to fall in love with gaming all over again. Really excited about um, reapproaching some of the older games that I played. Sam Chaffel. Being able to get some of those trophies that I was unable to get before. Paul Amadeus Lane. I am looking forward to playing Gran Turismo. The access controller is going to make me that little bit better. Paul Phillips. And hopefully I'll be able to beat others more often. Aaron Price. Just absolutely fantastic and something that uh, people with disabilities have never seen before. I'm really looking forward to seeing people play games surrounded by their loved ones. Gaming's always been and will always be for everyone. This is a big moment for the accessibility community. Ones like myself who have a disability and others who don't know that gaming is a possibility for them. We'll be able to work for you instead of you having to work with it. So if you haven't yet found the controller that would work for you, this might be it. And that's what I'm looking forward to is seeing how many lives will be changed. Text, empowered play, access controller available now. PlayStation. The warrior Sargon opens his eyes. Oh, to make Metroidvania open to everyone because of that question, accessibility become a main topic. And we decided to prioritize it early. We have no quick time events. We have big text by default. We have no color based feedback. I think that accessible design is good design. Title, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, Accessibility Deep Dive. Metroidvania games always have a minimap. Sometimes you forget that this particular place in the world looks like this. And you need to acquire a new power 
or have a new tool and come back later. It can be a cognitive load. It can be difficult to remember what you tried to achieve. So the player can place a memory shard to remember that this particular place looks like this. Actually, it's a new feature for this kind of games. We've made a lot of tests because we didn't know if the player would use it. And once they get it, they love it. Screenshots appear. Sometimes uh, one size fits all approach doesn't work and we need to provide options like uh, eye contrast for player with low vision or um, atomic difficulty parameters because the challenge is relative to everyone but we really want to be sure that everyone can tweak the experience to the fitting. Sargon slashes at the manticore, Jahandar. Title, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, a Ubisoft original, January 18th, 2024. In his office, Steve Saylor. Hello and welcome back. Before we carry on with the next block of awards, a quick reminder or for anyone just tuning in that we have captions, audio descriptions, and both BSL and ASL available. Info on that is in the description down below. Over the shimmering motes of golden light, text appears, best representation. So far, we've been talking about designing for accessibility in games. The next section of the show is about some other adjacent things that complement that. For the first of these, we have a returning guest. So a big, huge welcome back to Jay Justice to present the award for best representation. A black woman has long blue braids. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here again. Last year, I talked about how realistic, effective, and positive representation of disabled people in games has lagged behind accessibility for a long time. We still have a long way to go, but thanks to the inclusion and support for talented, passionate, and dedicated game developers, 2023 was a big year for representation. I'd like to give a quick shout out to EA in particular. They aren't in the finalists this year, but under Morgan Baker's stewardship, they've been making strides all across their portfolio. Jay grins. Representation matters. Positive representation of disability in games affects us as individuals, and it affects the perceptions of wider society as well. All of the finalists have done a wonderful job of this, so I'm very happy to be able to celebrate them today. They are moving out too. Jay smirks and tilts her head. Spider-Man too. And Hi-Fi Rush. This year's winner of Best Representation is... Multicolored fabrics hang on the yellow wall behind her. Spider-Man 2! Haley in Spider-Man 2 is a Black deaf character played by a Black deaf actress, Natasha Ophelia. She has hearing aids, and she communicates with a realistic combination of ASL, an interpreter, text chat, and text-to-speech. Some of her hearing friends use ASL, with realistically varying levels of competency. And while Haley was previously in Miles Morales, in Spider-Man 2, she's now a prominent and playable secondary character with her own side quest that does a wonderful job of communicating the deaf experience. Everything about this was approached with love and care, and it was knocked out of the park. So many congratulations to everyone involved. You deserve this. You're setting an example, not just for games, but for representation across all forms of media. Haley was a tremendous highlight of 2023. If you want to know more about the impact that she has had, there's a fantastic read on it by Damaris Burnell Vaughn, which you can find along with info about all the other nominees and winners on the awards page of gaconf.com. That's G-A-C-O-N-F.com. White text appears, best journalism. Our next category is Best Journalism. To present this, we have another returning guest, Vanessa Brassfield, AKA Pleasantly Twisted. Cherry Blossoms adorn their microphone. Hello everyone, and thank you again, Steve. Quality journalism is essential to the ongoing development and accessibility field, and we have outstanding examples exemplifying its growth, offering nuanced, mature, and distinct conversations, educating developers and players. The finalists for the Best Journalism Award are Speech Accessibility in Multiplayer and Co-op Games as a Person Who Stutters by Patricia Polizic, Why Gaming is So Important to Players with Chronic Pain by Jeffrey Bunting, and Danger Dumplings, How Arachnophobia Inspired a New Type of Gaming Innovation by Grant Stoner. And the winner of the Best Journalism Award is... 
Grant Stoner for his Danger Dumplings piece. Accessibility for mental health is an increasingly important topic, including within these awards with our first ever Mental Health Accessibility Award announced a short time ago. Grant's piece perfectly captures this moment and the breakthroughs of gaming accessibility through his trademark style of lifting other voices in the community. Journalism like this isn't just reporting on change, it's enacting change in itself. Congratulations, Grant, and excellent work as always. Vanessa Beams. Man, Grant, your trophy shelf must be groaning by now with all this extra hardware. But honestly, this is one of the most narrow categories and the vote was very, very tight. Perhaps this next time someone will take Grant's crown. Hmm? <laughs> Until then, many congrats, Grant, on another year of outstanding work. Journalism! <laughs> Over the shimmering motes of gold light, text appears, Best Academic Research. Our next category is for academic research. Research papers are often behind paywalls, so this category works a bit differently with its own separate nominating and judging panel. If you'd like to know more about that or anything at all about how the awards work, there's info on gaconf.com in the awards section. To present this award, we have Thomas Weston back again from Stockholm University. Over to you, Thomas. A white man sits before tall bookshelves. Thank you for having me back. It's an honor to be able to once again help celebrate academic research in game accessibility. Accessibility and inclusive design have grown since the earliest days of computer games, both within the industry and academia. And there are so many people that are passionate about this topic, and I can only hope that we have done a good enough job as judges here. The selection has been done in collaboration with Professor Jerome Drapier at both Canam and Cap Game in France and Ian Hamilton, independent game accessibility specialist in the UK. This year's finalists are all great additions to our fields of acad academic work, and they are audio description in video games, persons with visual disabilities weigh in, mathematics and sign language learning with a tangible game, an inclusive approach for deaf and hard of hearing and hearing children, evaluating accessible navigation for blind people in virtual environments. And the winner of this year's award for best academic research is audio description in video games, persons with visual disabilities weigh in. So huge congratulations to Maria Eugenia Lorena Morales and Carmen Maganon and everyone else involved. This research addresses a really hot topic in the industry right now audio description, including its value to players who are not blind. He raises his eyebrows. The paper also includes a very good background of the current state of game accessibility, especially about audio description and results from both a well done survey and interviews. It points to the future of more accessible gaming for blind and low vision players with a wonderful data that data developers can use with their own teams. So excellent work. In his office, Steve. Congratulations again, and also a special shout out for Thomas himself. These awards are part of the IGDA's Accessibility SIG, which Thomas actually founded in 2003. So congrats on the 20th anniversary, Thomas, and thank you for all that you've done and continue to do for accessibility. Thanks so much. White text appears, hardware accessibility, One of the leading lights of hardware accessibility is the Controller Project, who have been supplying affordable controller modifications to disabled players for over 10 years. Joining us today to present the winner of the hardware accessibility category is the founder of the Controller Project, Caleb Kraft. Caleb has a long beard. Thanks for the kind words, Steve. As Steve said, our work is all about modifying controllers, and that involves continual innovation from everyone involved. It has to because everyone's needs are so individual and the technology just keeps evolving. All three of the finalists are great innovators, forging ahead at removing barriers that are keeping people from being able to play the game at the point at which they interact with the platform. The finalists are Xbox keyboard remapping, the September PS5 update, Caleb Smirks, and iOS 17. 
three fantastic finalists, but there has to be a winner. And that winner is the September PlayStation 5 update. The September update laid the groundwork for the Access Controller through a feature called the Assist Controller, which allows you to link two controllers at a system level, sharing inputs between them. But it didn't stop there. It also added UI haptic feedback, which is an extra channel of feedback, letting the user know when they've done things like reached the end of a scrolling section, clicked a checkbox, or received a notification. This is a fantastic update for all kinds of disabilities. PlayStation, you have been consistent innovators in this space. Congratulations and thank you. I would say we're looking forward to seeing what you do next, but of course we already know the Axis controller arrived just a little too late for this year's awards, but it has already been making waves. So congrats again to PlayStation. You've been a regular face in this category, and I'm sure we'll see you nominated again many times in the future. Over the shimmering motes of gold light, text appears, best resource. Much of the progress made is down to developers sharing information, knowledge, and experiences. Sharing with each other and sharing with players. To present the award, we have not one, but two special guests, Siobhan Reddy and John Beach, Studio Director and Creative Director of Media Molecule. Siobhan wears a swirly pink blouse. Thank you for having us, Steve. Um, so this is an award that is about two things. First, it's about empowering developers with the tools and the information to support them in their accessibility journey. Uh, and second, it's about empowering players uh, with the tools and the information that they need too. Now, these are topics uh, that are very close to our heart um, uh, and an area that we really want to um, sort of improve in as a studio. And so it's been a joy to see the uh, progress made um, in this area over the past year. It's really inspiring. Um, and it's not only with the finalists, it's also across the whole industry. John wears a blue suit. The finalists for Best Resource 2023 are Xbox Playbook for Accessible Gaming Events, Xbox Adaptive Controller User Guide, and Talk for GMS. And the winner is... John raises his eyebrows. The Xbox Playbook for Accessible Gaming Events. Now, events, whether they're remote or in person, are a cornerstone of our industry. Uh, they're often the first point uh, where players uh, encounter or interact with what we're creating. And so it is vital that they are approached in an accessible way. The playbook is a beautifully comprehensive uh, piece of work sharing everything that Xbox has learned about event accessibility uh, with the wider community, and it's free. So if you have any involvement with events, uh, from organizing a conference to running a booth at a convention, please check it out. I know we're going to be using it. Uh, many congratulations to the team, uh, and especially Brennan Zahand. Uh, this is a hugely valuable uh, and much needed asset uh, for the whole industry. Congratulations. If you haven't read the playbook yet, you can find it at the Microsoft Learn website. It's a wonderful resource that has potential to drive real change across the industry. White text appears, best comms and marketing. This is a bit of change from last year. We have brought in the events category and to cover other forms of communication and marketing too. To present this award, I'd like to welcome my very good friend, Dirty F and Hippie herself, Liana Rupert. Liana has light blue hair. Thanks, Steve. This category is for the efforts to share and promote accessibility in the community while also sharing and promoting accessibility in an accessible way, which is important. We've got three great finalists who have all been doing fantastic work in this area and each in their own unique way. The Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown Accessibility Spotlight, the PlayStation Access Controller Consultant Stories, and Ubisoft Forward. She grins with deep maroon lips. And the winner for Best Comms and Marketing 2023 is... She makes a circular motion with her hands, freezes, then looks up. PlayStation Access Controller Consultant Stories. Liana presses her hands together. 
PlayStation really did go all out in the lead into the launch of the Access controller, including a number of resources, articles, and videos showcasing the development behind the scenes, as well as the benefits to the device. The consultant stories are a number of videos from a plethora of disabled individuals that PlayStation collaborated with for the development of this controller. It showcases the wide range of configurations for the device, the many uses and the benefits and the differences that it can make, while also telling the story through the medium of their own words through their own lived experiences when using it. It's a beautiful piece of work and a sincere congratulations to everyone involved. Thanks, Liana. It's a great example of nothing about us without us. There is lots uh, to learn from them, which is a great note to be able to end part two on. See you after the break for the final set of winners. Logo for player research. Text, advancing accessibility, Sebastian Long. Here at Player Research and Keywords, we believe everybody deserves the place to play. Player Research and Keyword Studios are together announcing a collection of new capabilities to help development teams go even further with accessibility, reaching even wider audiences through inclusive game design, accessible marketing materials, and wide-ranging support for testing, research, and engineering teams. To help studios learn about accessibility and plan the support they need during production, we have a range of new strategy workshops and training courses designed to help studios understand and include disabled players as early in their processes as possible. We're combining the strengths of player research with expert teams from all over keywords to help development teams deliver great experiences to wider audiences. Keywords is also bringing exciting capabilities for games accessibility auditing and certification, building upon the power of their thousands of trained FQA staff all over the world from Keywords Globalized Division. By drawing together these expert teams from across keywords, we're making available a level of support and knowledge that the cause of games accessibility really deserves. And this is just the start. If you'd like to learn more about any of these services, please reach out to accessibility at playerresearch.com. Logos for Player Research, Keyword Studios, Climax Studios, Trailer Farm, and Descriptive Video Works. Over a cartoonish snowy forest, a logo for Whitethorn Games. This year from Whitethorn Games, look out for accessibility features like these. Find a host of visual features like magical delicacies, character highlights, and background desaturation. Adventure with a stable camera in Mithrect Ambrosia Island. And enjoy the gardens of Botany Manor with a wide variety of features to help with motion sickness. Read dialogue in light or dark mode and control text speed and scroll. Dialogue appears. Maybe this was some kind of shrine? Read clues in Botany Manor with a plain text overlay. Enjoy text modifications like UI scaling and typeface choice. As always, play games designed with gameplay difficulty in mind. Solve puzzles at your own pace with no time constraints. Toggle on easy platforming and toggle off timed minigames. And enjoy haptic audio and visual cues for some navigation. Look forward to these features and more in 2024 and check out a list of features for these and other games at whitethorngames.com slash accessibility. A website appears. Hi everybody, Cody Craven here and I want to introduce you to a new mental health accessibility tool for video games called the Game Content Triggers Database. We have a collection of about 60 games right now. You can scroll by letter or you can just search through them all. You can also search by triggers. We have quite an extensive list of those and you can uh, expand them to see subcategories if you'd like. We have a tutorial on how to use the database, how to use search, what various things that you will encounter mean, and stuff like that. And we have a collection of resources where you can go to learn more about triggers and content warnings, mental health organizations, uh, some links for uh, mental health help and self-care, and places you can go to connect with like-minded people. And lastly, we have a collection of articles. We have a couple interviews up where you can meet the people that are behind building the database. And we have a new feature that we've just started called Community Playlist, where we will list some games that focus on a mental health topic that we enjoy playing when we're dealing with an issue or we are in need of something. And we will also be taking community submissions on those. I can't wait for you to check it out, and I hope you enjoy it. You can find the database at GameContentTriggers.com.
Logo for special effect. A young man sits in a wheelchair with a head support. Hi, I'm Tiago, and I'm studying game development and coding at Banbury College. He uses a joystick. I felt and still feel exhilarated about playing games. I like to play games where you drive the car or ride a bike because I'm not restricted on what I can do in a game, whereas in real life I am. He grins widely as he plays Asphalt 9. I was five years old when we first got an email about special effect, and I just turned six when I had my first visit. He enters the lobby. It has been important for me to have the ongoing support from everyone at Special Effects because as I've grown up they've helped me by adapting how I game. The difference it has made to my life is that I can be more creative because I can build whatever is in my mind. If I hadn't had the chance to game and be involved with Special Effects I wouldn't be in my games development and coding course. The difference you've made over the years has helped me a lot because I'm able to access a wider range of games. It also has allowed me to game with my friends. Employees observe as he uses an adaptive controller setup. I would like to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to be able to game freely and without limitations. Against a blue background, an orange scribble with an exclamation point appears. Logo for special effect. Logo for the odd gentleman. Text. Matt Korba, Creative Director. Accessibility is important. We believe that by making our games and our studio inclusive and accessible, that we can develop new types of gameplay with stories that everyone can enjoy. A group of people sign to one another. In a huge house, a girl with long brown hair looks out a window. Outside, a boy signs to her. I'm excited for your big show. Later, the girl signs to her father. I really enjoy performing, and I'm happy it sounds good to you, but... She pulls him over to a drum set, then sprinkles glitter over the cymbals and drums as he watches. She plays, throwing glitter everywhere. The girl signs, I'm not sure if my music fits on the page. Text, an accessible musical journey. The girl magically falls into a booklet of sheet music, which snaps shut. She looks around and signs, wow. Mystical creatures made of instruments dance around her. A harp fairy signs her lyrics. This is the bull made of brass instruments. The girl throws her arms out wide as birds made of music stands flutter past her. Title appears, Harmonium the Musical. Coming to Netflix games, logos for The Odd Gentleman and Xbox Game Pass. See more at harmoniumgame.com. In his office, Steve Saylor. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. I, I, I kind of did too. It was pretty cool. Now on to our final block of awards. These six are some unique categories to recognize some special work and some special people. Over the shimmering motes of gold light, text appears most improved. The first of these is for most improved. To present this category, we have one of the greats of the industry, he may not say it about himself, but we say it about him all the time. The one and only David Tisserand, Ubisoft's Director of Accessibility. David wears a slate gray t-shirt. Hi, everyone. Great to be here this year again. And thank you, Steve, for the kind words. I really appreciate it. So this award is to recognize progress within a single game through patches, remasters, remakes, or mods. The finalists for Must Improve this year have all made truly groundbreaking leaps forward. That would be remarkable if considered from the start of development, let alone added after the initial release. Once again, proving that while it's never too early to consider accessibility, it's also never too late. So those finalists are Broke the Investigator, Sea of Thieves, and Dead Space. And the winner, for must improve these, drumroll, Dead Space. 
the Dead Space remake included a wealth of improvement over the original. Not only the innovative content warning system that we've already talked about today, but also assist, menu narration, color blindness accessibility, toggles for simulation sickness, and the list goes on. So many congratulations to Motive on a tremendous achievement, and also to the other finalists too. All three are true innovators who have pushed the whole industry forward, and I can't thank you enough. Congratulations again. Back to you, Steve. It was only a few years ago that a remake doing anything for accessibility was pretty much unheard of. So to see efforts like this is fantastic. If anyone's watching who is embarking on a remake, if you want to attract new players and bring back OG players who are now older, make sure accessibility is a priority. And congrats again to the Dead Space team on your second win of the day. I never thought a horror game would get this much attention for accessibility, but here we are! I know some folks will be very, very happy. <laughs> White Text Appears, Greatest Accessibility Innovation. Next up, we have Greatest Accessibility Innovation, recognizing efforts that are leading progress across the industry. To present this, we have Elizabeth Servetsen, also known as Aravia. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry, I'm terrible at accents and also pronunciations. <laughs> anyway, take it away, Arabia. <laughs> Arabia has deep crimson hair. Hi there, everyone. With every passing year, the bar for accessibility has been pushed even higher, and 2023 has been no exception. Throughout of the rest of the show, you have already been told about many wonderful innovations, all of them worthy of celebration. But we do have three finalists of the biggest step forward in the industry, and they are Forza Motorsport, Blind Accessibility Racing, Sea of Thieves, Blind Accessibility First Person Shooter Mechanics, and Dead Space, Content Warning and Hiding System. And the winner of 2023's greatest accessibility innovation is... She mimes the drum roll with her index fingers. Forza Motorsports, congratulations. This has been a journey over a number of years for the Forza team. They set out to revolutionize the genre and they succeeded. But that success did not come by accident. This was made through a magical combination of early consideration, investment in design and collaboration with the community and with experts in the field. Demonstrating that complex AAA racing games can be made fully blind accessible is something that benefits not only the Forza players, but a whole industry. To quote John Knowles, Forza Design Director, It's almost as if there is a race among developers to see who can make the most accessible game, and it's honestly a race where everybody wins. Congratulations to you all! And congrats yet again to Turn 10 on your third win. It really is your day today, and deservedly so. Over shimmering motes of gold light, text appears, most dedicated publisher. And now we have two categories that are always hotly contested, most dedicated publisher and most dedicated studio. First up, we have most dedicated publisher. To present this, we're welcoming back your host from last year, Sightless Combat. An array of figures sit on shelves behind him. Yes, hello everyone and thank you so much. It's lovely to be back here again. It's been another wonderful year for accessibility with even more publishers joining the list of those making consistent and significant efforts to make gaming more accessible. And that's what this category exists to recognize. Our three finalists for this year are PlayStation Studios, Xbox Game Studios, and Ubisoft. And without further ado, the winner of Most Dedicated Publisher 2023 is Ubisoft. It has been a great year for Ubisoft. They've had consistent efforts across games like Assassin's Creed Mirage, Assassin's Creed Nexus VR, The Crew, Motorfest, Oddballers, and Anno 1800. But what really makes Ubisoft stand out is their comprehensive approach, not just to accessibility in games, but outside of them as well. So this encompasses things like accessibility of trailers, of social media posts, of websites, 
of events like the boundary pushing Forward 23 and their dedication to sharing accessibility info early, which is so, so important, and that importance cannot be overstated. A prime example of this is when they shared accessibility info for the new Prince of Persia game seven months before launch when the game was first announced. Congrats to David Tisserand, whose vision underpins it all, and to the accessibility team and accessibility QA team as well, the studios, the teams for engines, websites, comms and PR, and everyone else on, again, another great year. SK Grins, Steve Saylor. It really does take a village, and Ubisoft are a great example of how to achieve that. Many congratulations to Ubisoft on your fantastic 2023. Can't wait to see what 2024 will bring. White text appears, most dedicated studio. Moving on from most dedicated publisher, it's the award for the most dedicated studio. To present this for us, we have Mike Luckett, otherwise known as Mike the Quad. If you haven't checked him out on Twitch, make sure to do so. He's got some great streams. Over to you, Mike. Mike has a virtual gold and black background. Thanks, Steve. What a great award to be able to present. There are so many studios who have been doing consistently amazing things this year, and it's a shame only to be able to mention three. But our three finalists are Insomniac Games, Ubisoft Kiev, and Softleaf Studios. And the winner is Softleaf Studios. He grins broadly. Their game, Stories of Blossom is an incredible achievement for accessibility and not even excelling in one area across the board, vastly expanding the audience for its genre. It's an accomplishment that would be remarkable for any studio, but they achieved it as a micro indie husband and wife team. This is really the ultimate proof that the myth of accessibility being out of reach for smaller studios is just that, a myth. He nods pointedly. Both the game itself and the dedication of the studio have set a bar for the whole industry to live up to. And they're now moving into consultancy to help others do exactly that. Many congratulations to Connor and Claire and everyone else who has been a part of their journey. You thoroughly deserve this. Thanks, Mike. I can only agree wholeheartedly with all of that. Softleaf, we take our hats off to you. I don't have a hat, but pretend I do. <laughs> Steve Mimes taking off a hat. Over the shimmering motes of gold light, Tex appears. MVP award for unsung hero. And now it's time for the final two awards of the show. I really don't want it to end, so you know we're just gonna chill here for a sec. Steve crosses his arms. How y'all doing? Doing okay? Is, uh, is, uh, is 2024 shaping up to be pretty good? Yeah, mine too. Yeah, it's doing all right. He nods. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, actually, I, I've been able to start playing uh, Prince of Persia and Last of Us 2 Remastered recently. Woo! Ah, love, love starting off the year more, uh, with great accessibility in 2024. Mm. He works his jaw and looks down at the floor. I don't know what else to talk about. He gazes off to one side, fidgeting. Um, yeah, we could just chill. Well, I don't, like we don't make, we, we, maybe you don't have a lot of spoons left. You can you kind of just, you know, we need a little break right in between. The third break for the show. We'll just chill here for a sec. Steve uncrosses his arms. All right, okay, I could hear and see Ian's in Terrace glaring eyes at me, even from across the pond. So there we go. And, you know, across the country. Whatever. Okay. All right. These, <laughs> these awards are for categories that celebrate individual people. First, we have the MVP award presented by superstar Morgan Baker, game accessibility lead at EA. Morgan wears a silver pendant over a black blouse. Thanks for the kind words, Steve. It's an honor to be here. If there's one thing I've seen consistently throughout my career, it has been the power that individuals have to enact change. Often this goes behind the scenes, champions working tirelessly to move us forward, making significant and consistent efforts within a company. This award exists in recognition of just that, to shine a spotlight on some of the unsung accessibility heroes within the gaming industry. 
Those heroes are Topher Winward of Rare, Sam Chaco of Insomniac, and Jessica Roach of Ubisoft. The winner of the MVP award for most dedicated developer is Jessica Roach. Jessica, you are a driving force behind accessibility communications at Ubisoft, and your work is nothing short of phenomenal. You and your team have had some fantastic wins this year that we've heard a little bit about earlier in the show, from the breadth of accessibility in the live studio edition of Forward, to Prince of Persia's accessibility information, which was explicitly included and called out when the game was first announced, one of the first times this feat has ever been achieved for a AAA publisher. But this MVP award isn't just about individual wins, it's about your consistent work, day in, day out, and the years of progress that have led to the processes and methods that are so admired across the industry today. You are setting a template for others to follow. Congratulations, Jessica. You are a shining star. Morgan smiles with coral pink lips. Jessica's contribution to the industry has been truly pioneering. I am so happy to see her and her work recognized. Congrats again, friend, to you, Jessica. You absolutely deserve this, you wonderful human you. <laughs> Text appears, the Advocacy Award. Last and of course, by no means least, we have the Advocacy Award. To announce this final award of the night, we have none other than the head of PlayStation Studios, Herman Hulst. A Thunderjaw figure sits on a shelf behind Herman. Thank you, Steve. Creating an accessible world for gamers means a great deal to us at PlayStation. It motivates us and inspires our work. And a great deal of the progress we've made as an industry has been driven by and continues to be driven by the tireless work of advocates. That's what this award is for people using their voice to make a difference across the wider industry. Our three finalists are all wonderful heroes of the advocacy space, educating, raising awareness, and pushing all of us forward. The finalists are Sightless Combat, Arivia, who you may know as Elizabeth Sivertson, and Colo Jones, and of course the winner. To close out this year's award, it gives me great pleasure to present the 2023 Advocacy Award to... He clasps his hands and tilts his head. Sightless Combat. I've had the pleasure of experiencing a workshop with Sightless Combat at Gorilla, so I know firsthand how powerful and effective an advocate he is. He's been in advocacy for nearly a decade now, and across those years he has inspired, he's influenced, changed the thinking of so many people. So. Congratulations to you, you're such a worthy winner. All that you bring to the industry is recognized and appreciated. I couldn't agree more. What a great winner. And you can find his name in the credits of a whole bunch of past and current winners too. From God of War Ragnarok to Stories of Blossom, from Forza to Sea of Thieves. Congrats again, SK. You definitely deserve it, buddy. And I like to extend Herman's sentiment out to everyone. And by everyone, I don't just mean our winners and finalists, but everyone working in to drive the field of game accessibility forwards. All that you bring to the industry is recognized and appreciated. So a big thank you from all of us here to you. And yes, sadly, that was the last of our categories and what a great year it has been. It has been my honor to be able to host this awards every time. Thank you so much to Ian and Tara for inviting me back here again. Hopefully, fingers crossed, knock on wood, I'll be back here again in 2025 and we'll be able to celebrate all the amazing games in 2024. I cannot wait. And now back over to Tara for some closing words. Steve grins in her plushy filled office, Tara. Thank you, Steve. And not just for throwing it back to me, but for being our host here today. We literally could not do this without you. And for, you know, maybe like a LinkedIn recommendation. Uh, yes, hire Steve. Uh, he does amazing work and he's incredibly professional to work with. I also want to thank all of our presenters who helped Steve out today. For us, it's incredibly important that we have not only the people doing the work to make games accessible, but those impacted by accessible games as part of our award ceremony. So thank you to all of our presenters who joined us here today. 
And of course, it's really important to us to actually have an accessible award show and we couldn't do that alone and we rely on our suppliers. So I want to thank uh, Subtrend for all of our captioning, Brad Galloway for our ASL, Mind Clear Text for BSL, and Descriptive Video Works for audio description. Again, without these suppliers, we wouldn't be able to make it as inclusive as an event as we, we aim to. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, I wanna thank all of the nominees for all of the work that they have done. It's without the work these people do, we wouldn't have anything to celebrate. And of course, congratulations again to all of the winners today. Forza Motorsport, Stories of Blossom, Hi-Fi Rush, Street Fighter VI, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Dead Space, Spider-Man 2, Grant Stoner, Xbox, PlayStation, Ubisoft, Softleaf Studios, Jessica Roche and Sightless Combat. And of course, you know, trying to even figure out who should be nominated was such, such a hard task. So I want to say thank you to our panel of judges. And of course, to you, everyone who voted for the winners. And you know, you right now, thank you so, so much for watching. We will be back with the next Game Accessibility Conference in April for the UK edition. We'll be sharing more info about that very, very soon. See you next time. Thanks. Tara Grins, title appears. Hashtag GA Conf IDGA GA SIG Awards 2023. Winners. Cover art appears with text. AAA Excellence, Forza Motorsport. Indie Excellence, Stories of Blossom. Best Deaf and Hard of Hearing Accessibility, Hi-Fi Rush. Best Physical and Mobility Accessibility, Street Fighter VI. Best Blind and Low Vision Accessibility, Forza Motorsport. Best Cognitive Accessibility, Star Wars Jedi, Fallen Order. Best Mental Health Accessibility, Dead Space. Best Representation, Spider-Man 2. Best Journalism, Danger Dumplings, How Arachnophobia Inspired a New Type of Gaming Innovation by Grant Stoner. Best Academic Research, Audio Description in Video Games, Persons with Visual Disabilities Weigh In, Hardware Accessibility, September PS5 Update, Best Resource, Xbox Playbook for Accessible Gaming Events, Best Comms and Marketing, Access Controller Consultant Stories, Most Improved, Dead Space, Greatest Accessibility Innovation, Forza Motorsport, Most Dedicated Publisher, Ubisoft, most Dedicated Studio, Soft Leaf Studios. MVP Award for Unsung Hero, Jessica Roche. The Advocacy Award, Sightless Combat. Title, Hashtag GA Conf Awards 2023. Morgan Baker sticks out her tongue. To shine a spotlight on some of the unsung... <laughs> One impact that it can have a positive effect on, but not always, is the impact... Wait. One impact that is a positive one. Dr. Cowart squints. Okay. And we have outstanding examples that exemplify its growth, offering nuanced, mature, and distinct conversations. Vanessa scratches their forehead. Fuck. Arevia. Hello there. <laughs> to celebrate that progress and the people driving it, and who has, and no, no. Take two. That or take two. We're going into the take two category, okay? Take two. Not take two games because, you know, anyway, whatever. Steve contorts his lips. Thank you again to all of all. <laughs> Tara stops short of doing a head desk. In known exception. Has been non exception. Arevia mouths the line. One impact of particular interest to me is the way that design choices can impact. What? Well, often that impact has been known. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you again, Steve. I completely forgot the next word. Vanessa's eyes wander. Fuck. Thanks, Steve. Morgan sticks out her tongue again. Hi, thanks, Steve. For a grin is plastered on her face. <gasps> oh God. Person shooter mechanist. Mechanics. Vanessa glares around suspiciously. Well, this category works a bit differently with its our separate is more the with its own separate monitor. I set out to ruin. 
this a energy boost and Tara throws her head forward again, almost smacking her forehead on her desk. Dead Space has an innovative system for not only giving advanced warning of disturbing scenes, but also letting players blur them out with a full list of what is available. No. What's available? They're not features. Champions working tirelessly. Tirelessly. I'm tirelessly. 